Welcome to the KDB Review Podcast. I'm Sir Andy Davis, and it's a brand new season. Would you believe we're at season 10? Not only are we in double figures for seasons, but before Christmas, if I've got my maths right, we will also hit episode 200. Amazing, really. That's the one that we'll be doing live from the International Space Station uh, with special guests Tom Cruise, Asterix the Gaul, and Laszlo Biro, the inventor of the modern ballpoint pen. But until then, in this episode, we're asking a very simple but very relevant question. How's business? There's no doubt that uh, the market is uncertain, it's unpredictable, it's unwilling to play nicely at the moment, so that very straightforward question has lots of different possible answers depending on where you are in the market. Now, I know that I sound a bit weird at the moment. I probably sound like I'm recording this in the queue at Tesco's, but I'm actually in a little quietish corner of the KBSA annual conference at the Belfry. So for me right now, for those keeping up, it's the 27th of September. And we're here in this mecca for golf enthusiasts, of which I must say I am very much not one, uh, but each to their own. If I want to knock a little ball into a hole with a stick, I'll play snooker, as it's indoors and near the bar. Well, there is a great turnout here. There's loads of uh, top independent KBB retailers, many of them friends of the show. So right now, my plan is to wander off into the area where everyone is having a nice cup of tea and see who I can ask my simple question to. But before I do that, let me remind you that entries are very much open for the KBB Review Retail and Design Awards 2024. We have categories for kitchen and bathroom designers, kitchen and bathroom retailers and showrooms, installers and suppliers. It's totally free to enter and entries close on November the 16th. And that really is the closing date. We'll be extending it. To find out everything you need to know, go to kbbreview.com forward slash awards. And I'll put that link in the episode description. Right, for now, let's go and see who we can find and try and get some thoughts on how the market is behaving and how's business. I'm uh, Dan Strong from Jones Britain Kitchens, based on the Kent Sussex border. At this very point in time, I would say it's a little bit quiet. It's been booming, most of the year's been up and down like a yo-yo. But currently, I was expecting September to probably kick off. Kids go back to school... You know, yummy mummies, let's have a bit of time to relax and then go, oh, let's go and talk kitchens. And that hasn't happened. Uh, we still, it still could happen, but it, it hasn't happened when I thought it would happen. So that kind of mixed picture up and down, what are you attributing that to? I think there's an element of people watching the pennies. I think it's slightly uncertain times. People still worrying about mortgages and worrying about interest rates, worrying about their heating bills. I think for us, our marketplace has been kind of more middle market over the last few years and we're changing our marketing to go slightly higher end because I think those people have money to spend. I think maybe we're possibly slightly in the wrong market and have been marketing to possibly the wrong people for a little while but we know that and we're changing it. The ability to pivot, to switch is kind of what makes entrepreneurial we, we, independence work. Yeah, we've, we've done it over many years. I mean, two, three years ago we were right at the top end of the market and we thought we were missing something. So we pulled ourselves down to the middle market and we swap and change when we need to. And I think this is one of those times. I'm not worried. We've got plenty of installs until the end of the year. So I'm not overly worried. But I just think we all need to tread a little bit carefully. So how about inquiries? Uh, are they up or down? No, inquiries at the moment is what's quiet. But we have had a very good run of clients in over the last four or five months. So we have sold quite a few jobs, which means we're busy with jobs, but inquiries are definitely down. Let's imagine, let's cast ourselves a year's time, we'll study you again. Where do you think you're going to be? Where do you think the market's going to be? I still think there'll be a certain amount of uncertainty. I think interest rates will probably come down a touch. I think there might be a little bit more buoyancy. There's never a quick fix. We've got elections probably coming up next year. More than likely we'll have a different government, and there will still be a little bit of unease. So... I think it's just going to be a bit testing for everybody and we just need to adapt accordingly. Graham from House in Interiors in Wigmore Street. It's not easy, but it's OK. It's uncertainty created by media and people are dithering. People can't really make a decision. So there's less people who are more serious as opposed to lots of psychic. Yes, yeah, so people that are coming in are serious, but they're serious for longer. And what discussions are you having around budget? I mean, you're on Wigmore Street, you've done some cheap things. Is cost of living an issue, or is it just makes people more aware of value for money? How does that work? I think 
it might not be affecting them directly, but because people are talking about it, I think they feel they should be talking about the cost of living rise crisis or that it might not actually be affecting them. So it's different things like you hear them talking about maybe this cost of a life loaf of bread in Gales is that sort of level of worry yeah. of what things right. have, how things have gone up. Well, they might have to go to Sainsbury's rather than Waitrose. Oh, my God. And are you noticing anything about what they choose or the decisions they're making? Are they making slightly less bold choices? Are they being a little bit less brave, do you think? Overall, I think we've always done something that isn't going to be a trend. So there's just more of that classic, timeless. So no real change for us, but there is definitely that I don't want it to date. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it properly. But people are happy to invest, so they are they doing it, but they, they have maybe short of money, but they will still want all the things. They will add the cube to their Kuka tap. They will go for the slightly more expensive freezer with the ice maker in it. But they see it as investment. Yes. Luke here from Colville Kitchens, and I also own Kitchen House as a kitchen franchise. So business is OK, and, and that's as level as it gets, because nobody's breaking any records, and I don't think anybody's going under, or no one's going under any, any, any dangerous level. I think we're at a point in time where money's not cheap, people are still worried about their jobs, the housing market's stale, so we're getting a lot of feedback from clients of the design's great, the budget works really well, we're going to wait till next year. So they will come home to roost, but, uh, but, uh, and, and we're not worried. We are pretty much about the same turnover as last year, so we're, we're not breaking any records, but, but we're okay. And, you know, and I think that's the state of the market. The whole sector, I speak to bathroom retailers and kitchen retailers, and everybody's the same. There's a few guys who kind of, a bit of there's a bit of chest puff and a bit of bravado. Oh, yeah, we're brilliant. Mm, yeah, well, I don't know about that. I'm not so sure. So is the new business coming in at the other end? Yeah, yeah, the leads are coming through. So the interest is there. So the leads are coming through, and our lead generation the, 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 it hasn't dipped. The, the levels are good. But actually getting, getting those leads converted into sales is a little bit difficult. If our conversion rate followed last year's conversion rate, our turnover would be much higher right. because we, took, we, we converted a lot more last year than we have this year. The, the kind of customers you get aren't in a crisis when it comes to cost of living. So are they more conscious of value for money or talking about the minutiae of the, of the cost of the detail than they have been before? I think, reading between the lines, I think what people are more conscious of now is the, is the actual cost of the product. They're kind of taken back by it. So somebody would walk into our showroom with a £30,000 budget and they, they would think, that's a lot of money. Yeah. 30 grand's a lot of money. And then you go through the brief and they want all of the appliances. It's all got to be... And then they want quartz and granite and marble floors. And you go, well, you're going to be close to 40, 45. And they're kind of taken back. Why, I can't get my dream kitchen for this £30,000 I've saved for 20 years. I think that's a bit of a factor. And I think they need a, they need a few months to digest that. They need a few months to go, well, actually, we can't get what we wanted for 30. We're going to have to push the boat out and spend 40. Or we're going to have to settle. And that's a difficult pill to swallow, right? If you've got your heart, your heart set on marble and all of the singing and dancing appliances, but you can't do it for a huge chunk of money, it's a bit of pill to swallow. We're still here in a year's time. Yeah. How will you be reviewing the trouble as previous? I think we'll be in a bad position. Mm. I genuinely do. I think, the, I think it all stems from the housing market. We know that, that, that that's kind of the be all and all of where the construction industry sits, domestic construction. I think in the new year that will stabilise. Because the, the housing market's in decline, right? But it's only in decline to a level that we're, we should be used to. It went crazy and now we're kind of getting back to levels. And I think uh, money should become a little bit more stable and cheaper as well. And I think that New Year feeling is going to be a good one. 2024 is going to be a good year. I do think a level of stability triggers a pent-up demand. Yes. And, and I think that's going to be really interesting to see whether that means a boom or whether that means a straight line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's going to be the interesting part for next year. If I was to sit here in 12 with Simon and say, right, Luke, you've done exactly the same as, as you did last year, are you happy? Yes. Yeah. I'm ultimately happy. Every, I haven't had to let anybody go. The business is still working. We're designing, we're selling. Yes, we're happy. Just one year where there isn't a war or a, a yeah. pandemic or yeah, a yeah, yeah. Brexit. Or a, exactly. I mean, we are going to get a general election, obviously. That's, that's, the, that's the only thing that could, could trip us up, right? That, yeah. could, that could have a big effect on the markets, and then we could, we'll see where that goes. So I think independent retailers are very good at controlling the controllables. Yeah. That's what they do best. But, you know, but equally, because they're independent businesses, the uncontrollables tend to hit them that bit yeah. harder. Yeah, yeah. But so it's going to be really interesting, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, but I'm looking forward to it. I, I, I predict a good year for us. For both businesses, I predict a good year. Yeah. So I, I think the sector will be quite buoyant again. Paul Hyde, uh, CEO of AMDS, so we're the trade association that represents the appliance uh, manufacturers. 
I, I would say it's 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 been a tough year compared to the last three years. Certainly, you know, we tr- we track appliance overall sales, and they're probably going to be about their lowest they've been for 15 years in total. However, what I would say is, a we think we're near the bottom, so we are more positive about next year. And actually, B, you know, this show is really about kitchen specialists, the sort of full service solution. That sector of the market is not being hit as bad. So actually, I think the people that we're with today. Yeah, I'm not saying it, it's great, it's easy, but actually a lot of them are, are still managing to see some good business or business growth. How much of that downturn is a correction from the post-lockdown boom, and how much of it is just the way the market heads? I think it's a mix of both. For sure, you know, we had two of the best years ever, so that was people bringing purchases forward because that their discretionary spend was uh, restricted. But also what we're definitely seeing now, you know, with cost of living pressures on, is people are delaying purchases, maybe making do on something they would have replaced, possibly even getting stuff repaired, which is a good thing because that's extending life. So I think it's a mix of a few factors. And are we over the the shortages and the supply issues now? My, my understanding is there shouldn't be component or capacity-related supply issues. I know there's been some stories released on some supply chain issues, but that seems to be more of an IT system issue. I, I don't think there's any fundamental issues with the ability of factories to produce the product that people want, particularly as the, the market slowdowns global. So actually some of that demand has dropped, dropped back a bit. So if we're stood here in a year's time, where do you think the market's going to be? I, I think by this time next year we'll be back to some modest growth, you know, maybe 3 to 5% in terms of volume. We're, we're obviously seeing prices stabilise a bit now, so hopefully we are we are at the end of the regular quite steep price industry. So I would say a bit of, bit of stability a bit of confidence, but we're all heading in the right direction again, and, and, and maybe we're looking at a new government by then, and who knows what, what they may or may not stimulate the market back with. I'm Phil Beeson, all from Alexander's. Yeah, it's been a little bit uncertain. We've had a slow footfall during the summer, but it's gradually picking up. Uh, we've seen September so far um, looking a lot more brighter, starting to see a few more orders come in, but definitely not as busy as we were this time last year, that's for sure. So is that footfall? Is that new business? Is that people finally making decisions that you've been waiting for for months? Well, they're both, really. I think footfall was definitely down in July and August. Then, obviously, the pipeline started to get created early September. When the kids go back, the hot weather probably didn't help things, delay things a little bit. But we're now seeing that we're, because of the appointment levels are up, we're now starting to see more conversions, but that's filling up our pipeline for November. Right, and are you seeing people talking to you about cost of living or budgets? Are they being more careful with their money or looking for more value for money, even if they're spending big amounts? Not so much. I mean, our, our client base is, tends to be the more affluent 55 pluses. Uh, so I don't think budget is necessarily the thing. They like the sort of the turnkey installation sort of service and, and project management that they do. So it's not always about the price, it's more about the, the service. I mean, there is an argument, isn't there, that it's times like this when the skills of the independent really come into their own, because it isn't about price necessarily, or it isn't about counting pennies. They're paying for the full service. But they still want to get good value. And uh, so we are, they, you know, with COVID, there was people getting less cross quotes because I think they couldn't be bothered with all the hassle, whereas now we are getting more cross quotes we are seeing people say deliberate for longer because they're waiting for other quotes to come in but overall though we're generally back where we were two three years ago right. pre-covid i would say if we're stood here in a year's time what would we be saying about the year just gone i think everybody had boom time over the, over the last two years and i think it's just mellowing back to where it was pre-covid so it's a bit reassuring normal I think so, yeah. For, for Alexander's, anyway, I don't know. I mean, everyone I'm speaking to here, they all are saying, if anyone's up, it's, it's a surprise. But we're steady. Uh, Richard, uh, chair of the KBSA. So actually, the last month's been exceptional. Probably the year's been a bit strange, but it's been delayed by a multitude of factors. Not, not so much the cost of living, I don't think, for us, but certainly builders, supply and, and things like that. 
But yeah, last month has been yeah really, really good. So how come last month's been so successful? What's changed? For us, it's kind of, I don't know if it's luck or, or what, but all the deals have just come into place. All the builders are now at the stage where they're going ahead. The, the builders are available to start the jobs and people are now willing to to then go, go, go. So it's just all come at once. I'm, I'd have rather it was staggered over the three months, but yeah, I'll, t- I'll take it whichever way it's coming. So how about footfall and new business coming through the door? So footfall has been really good all year, actually. We, we haven't had a, a month where we haven't had people coming in the door and we are still closed doors. So that's it's positive. We're getting you know, online inquiries from our brochure downloads to making an appointment online. And that's been really good all year. It's just delays and, and they're almost sure things with a lot of the customers, which is unusual. They're repeating customers, but still delayed. So you know, you're the chair of the KBSA. What vibe are you getting from your members? Because it seems to me it's... You can talk to one person is terrible, and the next person is exceptional. So what, what's the vibe you'll get? Yeah, we are having that, and, and and some of it may be luck. I mean, I keep saying to people, my mortgage is due in March, and I'm on 1.49 or something at the moment, and, and so the middle market is still getting squeezed a lot, and it will continue to be squeezed. But I think if you're in the upper level, you've been fine, and we found that our order values are much higher than they were last year. I think generally people working in the middle market and the lower market have really found it tough but we have had mixed bags I've spoken to a lot of people especially with what happened with Mealway and things spoken to a lot of retailers and it's been really mixed from no one coming in the door to a decent football so we're standing here in a year's time what is going to be the market then oh, I'm just wondering what the next sort of crisis is going to be that we're going to we're going to dodge as retailers but um I think there's still massive opportunity for independence and it seems like the market's still geared up for independence. So I think there's loads of opportunities and I think coming to things like this, adding to your repertoire and I think we'll be fine next year and we'll, we'll ride it, whatever it is, and that we shall see. Rob Mascari, Mascari Design in Nottingham. It's up and down, um, has been sort of most of the year really. I, I think we just need a massive injection of enjoyment back to the way of life for everybody basically, whether you're in business from our end or from consumers' ends. And I just feel like we're just sort of going through the process of coming out. So sort of, we've had Brexit, we've had COVID, we've had wars, and no, everyone's sick to death of hearing about it. You know, interest rates, whatever it is. And I, I just think there's an element of... Um, public perception that this is just our lives through the years become this sort of hesitant and sort of anxiety to do anything make big decisions and that's basically filtered through into kind of business so where, where we sit in the market there's still people out there with money but we kind of feel that they're maybe just hanging on to see what happens next year or what's around the corner or that's the sort of vibe we're getting but you know to be perfectly honest with you, that, that sounds a bit negative this year has actually been better than I was expecting it to be. And maybe we were set low expectations for the year, but so far, you know. So is it footfall? Is it just people taking a long time to make decisions? Can you put your finger on what it is? Inquiries, definitely. So it's a numbers game, isn't it? The more inquiries you get, the more design presentations you can do and perversions will, will naturally sort of come from that. So if inquiries are down, it's having to try and really find whoever you can almost sort of drag them in and, I just, just sort of keep playing at it, if you like, to try and get deals over the line, and I think that seems to be the way. But definitely a hesitancy. There's a lot of things that we're like, well, our pre-orders for the folder has never been so full. That's not necessarily a good thing, because what that sometimes means, pre-orders come in yeah. and then shift to orders, but they're hanging in pre-orders for too long. They're not necessarily gone. You know, like I say, they go to orders or archives, if you like, So, but they're just hanging in pre-orders, and I think that's where we're currently but getting But are they straight. dithering because financial reasons? Is, are they dithering because they just can't make their mind up? I, well, I get the impression it's what's going off in the wider situation. I mean, our clients on, you know, nobody wants to pay an extra £1,000 a year on gas or whatever, but it's not going to affect them spending sort of forty, fifty thousand pounds on the kitchen. What is maybe affecting them, of course, is thinking, well, hold on a minute, you know, let's see where the interest rates are going to come out at. What's going to happen into next year? Are we going to have a general election? Are we not? You know, and, and I just think we've received an injection of enthusiasm back into the public. And then hopefully then that will resurrect their interest in making these key decisions that they seem to be hesitant currently on doing. I'm Stephen Johnson from Kuka UK and Ireland. Business this year has been more challenging than the previous two years. The start of the year was a little bit more difficult. During the summer period, we've seen it pick up. For us, we see a challenging end to 2023, and we also feel that that's going to continue into 2024. What are you attributing that to? Uh, We don't think the full pain of interest rates and cost of living has yet hit. We think that is hitting as we sit now, and we feel that that will have an impact in the first 
quarter or half of next year. But we see a pickup from them. Right, so if we're studying here in a year's time, what will we be talking about? I would look to see us return to our normal levels of growth. Interestingly enough, we have done some analysis and what we've seen is the growth that we attained during COVID, we feel is coming ahead of when we would have actually got it. So we look at the period of 2022-23 as perhaps balancing out the excesses that we got the previous years. And yeah, we see a return to, to growth in 2024. I'm um, Toby Griffin and I'm um, a business consultant from KBB Support. I think we're getting back to where we were sort of 2018, 2019. I really noticed a bit of a lull just before summer and everyone started panicking a little bit, but I think it is coming back. And then we think, well, actually, that's how it always used to be. We used to have that quiet period before uh, the summer and then similarly we'll get that quiet period end of November to December. So. It's just basically as it was. It's funny what a mixed bag we're getting from people. There's lots of factors at play here, aren't there? Yeah, and I think it depends where you are, but it, 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 it has, has always been the case that individual retailers will have their own experiences, and it could be a, their local competition has, has gone and bossed or something like that, so they might be doing particularly well, or they've had a new competitor. So, so everyone has their own personal experience. But overall, I just think we're back to where it was. So it is, it's competitive, but there's business out there, but you just... Not like during the COVID days where you were, you just had to open the doors and you were selling kitchens and bathrooms. Now you've actually got to be pretty good. And, you know, I think I know of quite a few businesses in the last year or two, unfortunately, that have gone bust. But it's, you know, the balance is being redressed now. But the quality retailers will survive no problem. Do you think retailers, given the experience the last few years, are a bit more open-minded about bringing in health, about exploring new ideas and pivoting and changing their strategies a bit? Not particularly, no. But I would like to think that, particularly with obviously we're here at the KBSA conference, this seems to be getting better and better each year. And an industry body, a, a strong and growing industry body, is probably the best thing we can do. And with all the various speeches and talks we've had today, it's making people think and opening their minds. So the more that we can help the and work with the KBSA to, to help grow, I think the better for the industry. And then we won't have retailers sitting in their vacuums. They've been forced to think bigger because of the nature of competition yeah. like this, yeah. So, okay, so next year, where do you think the market will be? How do you think people will be performing? What are we going to be talking about then? It's going to be a much more certainty. We're, we're heading into a period of certainty out of a period of uncertainty. Because, yes, we'll have a new government, almost definitely. Hopefully we won't get a return of a COVID-type thing. The Ukraine war, for good or for bad, seems to be down to a bit of a stalemate. And so actually, I, I hope that it will be a boring year next year, because I think we all need it. And we can all just get on with doing the job, rather than having to think about these macro situations and then it's sort of stressing everybody out, including clients as well. Because, you know, clients want confidence. And I think they will enjoy a relatively quiet year and and then they'll start buying more because they'll have the confidence to do so. So I think it'll be a quietly nice year. Well, there we go. I'm back in my little nook in the corner of the room here. And there's a lot of interesting views there, weren't there? There's obviously a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen next. Customers taking long times to make decisions, even those with money are watching interest rates. And I think a lot of people listening to this are going to be nodding their head in agreement with a lot of things that were said there. I think the flow of work is going to be the big issue as we go on. I don't think we've hit the real impact of interest rate rises yet. I think we're a few months away from that. I'll still be here for next week's episode, as we'll be looking at highlights from the big flagship retailer panel discussion from today's conference. And there's a lot of interesting points in there there too particularly on apprenticeships so look out for that next week don't forget to get your entries in for the kbb review retail and design awards they close on november the 16th it's totally free and you can find all the info at kbbreview.com forward slash awards that's it for episode one of season 10 we're off to a flying start and i'm off for a cup of tea see you next time